I can't really break it down by couple anymore. I have to now break it down by episode with After the Altar. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Yates. I am Buile Stefania for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today we're gonna continue our series with Love is Blind season three. Now we've got three episodes of After the Altar and I'll be breaking it down by episode. If you're curious, stay tuned. My question whenever I see these kind of shows is like, how long from where we are now? Because obviously some of this stuff is really old. And we saw last season with season two when they did After the Altar that, you know, obviously a lot happened. A couple got divorced. I think both the couples got divorced before they even aired it. And that was not reflected in After the Altar. So I feel like when they do it so far from when they're going to be premiering it, a lot of the information that would be important to see why these couples broke up is not even portrayed. So I watch After the Altar with like a grain of salt because I feel like they really don't share everything that we need to know. Like the pertinent information usually is not there because it's so outdated. Wow, I really didn't know who that was. At first I thought it was Zay, then I was like, is it Nancy? I did not think it was Raven. <laughs> This, I can already tell this is going to be so hard to watch because I have a feeling we're not going to see anything about the SK cheating allegations, any of that on here. I hope that I'm pleasantly surprised, but I don't think we're going to see anything. So I feel like it's going to be very, very hard watching Raven and SK especially because I said in my video about them, I was really fooled and I feel like this is just going to continue breaking my heart as I watch this couple that I thought had a lot of potential, just, I guess, lied to the world. I still don't know what I believe, but that's going to be the hardest thing, I think, for me watching After the Altar, but who knows what's to come. <laughs> married bedroom is fine. It's fine. I would say it's a little better than fine. Well, but, you know, we do have a lot of sex. I like. <laughs> Since I never did a video on Alexa and Brennan and I don't plan to because I just don't think there's enough to talk about. One thing that I will say that I appreciated with them is when Alexa recognized that there were things about their sex life that she was not happy about. And I remember she was talking about it at one of the dinners with the rest of the couples that she basically vocalized those concerns and was like, is this the sex I'm gonna be having for the rest of my life? And clearly Brennan was receptive to what she had to say. They made some adjustments and shifts and now they have a great sex life is what they're saying. So that I thought was really important because Often we do not talk about sex enough. We do not talk about what we like, what we dislike, what might be triggering to us. We don't talk about our kinks a lot of times because we're afraid of being judged or shamed. And a lot of times it's really, really hard for us to hear feedback from our partners about what they don't like because we're looking at it as a reflection of our capabilities. When a lot of times you've just been doing things differently and are fully capable of doing what your partner is asking. So. I thought that was one of the biggest lessons we could learn from Alexa and Brennan is to have those conversations about sex, not be shy about them and be open to receiving the feedback that your partner is trying to communicate so that you all can have the best sex life possible. I know I'm your stepmom, but also your best friend. Like what's the name situation I just, gonna I be? I really feel like after your <laughs> stepmom's so hot, your mom's so hot. Like I know, okay, your grandma, okay. This is one of my favorite things in the world is to see a blended family thriving. I'm just, those stories warm my heart. They always have since I was a kid. I was around a lot of blended families that functioned very well. And now I'm a part of a blended family. So to hear that she's her stepmom and her best friend, I know some people are like, ah, oh, that's kind of a weird combination, right? Because you might hear about your father's sex life, but as a person who's very, and Alexa seems the same, like I'm not very ashamed about sex or talking about sex, that wouldn't bother me. So I just love seeing this dynamic. It's one of my favorite things to watch is a healthy blended family dynamic.
It is kind of chaos sometimes, trying to work in all the different traditions together. But my entire family now converted to Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> they took, they all went to class together. <laughs> okay, he definitely got me. I thought for a second they really did all convert to Judaism, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, this is really a family affair, but okay, they were joking. Our family's growing, and uh, we love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Love all you guys. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. This is another thing that I love to see because an extension of, you know, the blended family dynamic is the relationship between the in-laws. I love it when you can have the families of both partners getting along. It works out so well, especially when there are grandkids in the equation and everyone has a relationship. That was really important to me. I remember when I was dating and it's something I'm always talking about with my couples, especially the ones who are engaged starting to create that bond prior to the wedding. A lot of people rely on the wedding for family members to meet each other. And I would encourage you to start trying to get those meetups together or take trips to see those family members prior to that so that the relationship is already there. You kind of want to have an idea of how well your families get along before you get married. Not that it's a deal breaker if they don't get along, but if they do, it can be very helpful if you all are experiencing stress or need some support to know that you've got the support on both sides. But also if they aren't gonna get along, you need to know that as well because you do not want the shock of your life on your wedding day. Why don't you give a redo of your speech for a wedding right here, right now? You want really, you to be honest? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What? Well, I, I hate him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, okay. Okay. All right now. No. So uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. He is who he is. Respectful and hardworking. Uh, no offense. I think she has the upper hand. I would level that out a little bit. You think? Fact. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh my god. Uh, no. I'm just being honest. So. Okay. It's interesting because I, it looked like Brennan's mom agreed that she has the upper hand. I'm very curious what Alexa's dad meant when he said that Alexa had the upper hand over Brennan. Hoping it's not just about money because obviously that's a family thing. So I'm not really sure what he means by that, but it looks like his family is kind of in agreement about it. So I hope that they explain a little bit more what they mean. But even though Brennan's saying, okay, all right, you can tell looking at Brennan's body language, he's a little bothered. I mean, nobody wants to hear that. I think they were kind of fishing for compliments here. They were expecting praise and it seems like it turned into a little bit of a critique. So kind of awkward. If I was sitting at the table, I know I would be feeling the tension. If it was me, I'd flip that around, but that's a hard thing to do. We have a healthy balance in our relationship, thank you. He <laughs> takes control sometimes her. and then sometimes I do. Which... Okay, so it looks like they are talking about who wears the pants in the relationship. Oh wow, so his family is like, yeah, definitely, and her family is agreeing. But I think it's interesting that there's even an expectation that one of them would wear the pants or that it'd be a problem if Alexa wore the pants. Her dad is basically saying he would flip that. He would not let his wife wear the pants in the relationship. And so we're just really looking at competing values here. And it seems like both of them come from relatively patriarchal families. And so that's why they're in agreement about that. It's kind of sad to see that that is the situation that they're basically having to vocalize and explain their preference for how power or control is distributed in the relationship. No couple should have to defend that. But you know, now I have a little bit more clarity on what they mean when they say she has the upper hand. Jackson, you gotta be buff with the guys. Come on, boy. Big dogs. We've been together for a year now and we have plans to move in with each other coming up. And we're just gonna go with the flow and do what we feel is best for us. It's really worked the way we want to. This is how we have to do it. And we don't regret it at all. Um, yeah. And you can kind of piggyback on that if you want. No, yeah, it... Yeah. Yeah. Our... These two, you know, we always knew from very early on that the relationship has very hostile moments. 
A lot of us were concerned about emotional, psychological abuse that could be happening in the relationship. I've always thought from the beginning that with Matt and Colleen, it was a relationship of convenience in terms of Colleen had been dumped by her two top guys, Brennan and Cole, and Matt was another person who was interested and they just made it work. Now, obviously we don't always see all the connections. We don't even see all the proposals that happened. So maybe there was more to it, but you know, I feel like they're sticking it out and the things they hold on to to stick it out sometimes can be a little superficial. I do understand that the yes is what makes them feel like, hey, this person loves me, wants to be with me. But they did both admit that they were very much on the cusp of saying no, both of them. So it's not like it was a yes out of certainty. It was kind of like a, okay, let's see how this goes. So I'm hoping that the relationship is predominantly positive. I stand by what I said in the video regarding them that I think it's good they are not living together yet. Even though they're saying their plans are to move in together and buy a house, it seems more, you know, especially now that it's been a year at the time of this recording, it seems like, you know, maybe they're still evaluating the relationship and they might be married on paper, but they're kind of still dating. They're just deciding, does it make sense for us to take that next step and you know, be a fully functioning married couple, inclusive of moving in together, sharing finances and things like that. So I look at them as like a couple who's still dating. They just happen to say yes at the altar and we'll see what happens with them. You know, I'll be definitely watching to see if there's more of those cues that made some of us worried early on, but I would say so far in that scene, I didn't see anything that was particularly concerning other than the fact that they clearly are not on the same page about most of what's coming next for them. Relationship started off with communication and then like right. our communication went. They don't agree on the same city they should live in, how much they should spend on a house. They don't agree on the type of dog that they should get. So it seems like there's a lot of disagreement happening here. And I'm curious about their ability to work through that and successfully manage conflict. You know, at the end of the day, it might be an incompatibility thing in terms of just what they envision for their futures, but hopefully they can find a way to work through it and, and find a compromise that both be happy with. Home sweet home. Probably, yeah. Hey, kiddos. We're home. <laughs> this is the future that we envision together, and I know that doing this will help us get there. Aww. Aww. Look at us. Mm. I'm, I just still have the hardest time watching them. <laughs> because one thing I will say, when I look into all the allegations, there are just such big gaps in what was reported like okay we went on a trip and i'm like is this during the time when they weren't together like when there are some big gaps in the story with the receipts but then i heard things like he invited a girl he was seeing to the wedding just to prove that it wasn't real so i don't know if all of that is true then this changes the whole thing right i just don't know what is true and what's not true and i just don't go down a rabbit hole looking at all the information because a lot of it is very conflicting <sighs> so i can't fully revel in the beauty of these conversations with sk and raven just feeling like the whole time he's just lying or maybe they're both lying i don't know what do you guys think what's up miss hi <laughs> I know, that's why we're wearing pink together. Look at that. Oh my god. Wrong, you know? Hey. Is your hair blonde? It is blonde. I change that up, huh? Yes. I like it though. Summer is over, so gotta change the look. I love that. Okay, so then that tells you the fact that Bartiz saw her hair blonde for the first time, that tells you that after the altar was filmed before the reunion. So we probably aren't gonna learn much more through After the Altar than what we already learned when we watched the reunion. Does your family know what I mean? Does Steve know? They do not. They don't? They actually don't know anything. They spoke out on the hurt that I felt that I couldn't say. You brought me here. You brought your mother here. You know, you are just it's it's okay. Okay. Why would they do all this? To bring us all here to waste our time with my sister. 
I would have never spoken to you that way. I think it's interesting how Nancy admits that her family was basically expressing to Bartise her feeling that she wasn't in a place to be able to communicate to him because she is kinder or more soft-spoken having a difficult time advocating for herself which makes sense why when we look at the reunion she was doing that for zay we talked about that where she's really going for cole but it's like she's saying to cole everything that she wishes she could say to bartise and so it seems like that's something that she's learned from her family you know to absorb another person's emotions displace it so that you can help them express their negative feelings, anger, sadness, disappointment, without them having to take ownership of how they feel. So since we now know that after the altar was filmed before or during the same time as the reunion, we're not going to get the moment I wanted, which is I want to see what the girls think after the reveal of that cuties thing. You know, they were all so upset about the cuties thing, but I want to know like, okay, after you saw that, are you still upset? Like, do you still stand with Zay on this? Uh, Paul is my therapist. Oh, okay. my therapist. It just felt like I've, I've never had the male perspective on something. <laughs> and I also just wanted to know if it was if it was me. I wanted a male to call me out and be like, hey, it's you. You're actually seeing things crazy. Did he? She said I, she wanted her therapist to tell her that she's seeing things crazy. Did he? That's what I want to know. Now we've literally talked about everything. Or like, you know, getting having sex. So I'd say like, wow, that was really like what you did. Positive really reinforcement, good. baby. Was, I yeah. really like that. I'm like, oh, I enjoyed that too. And you know, babe, you gotta be on top. I got acid reflux tonight. So you gotta oh be on top. God. You got <laughs> acid reflux. <laughs> That's so good. John Gottman, who is someone I talk about a lot when it comes to couples work. In their book, Eight Dates, which is something else I'm always, always talking about, they talk about a sex review, just taking time to reflect on most, if not all sexual experiences with your partner and breaking down what you like, what you didn't like, and just making sure that you both are on the same page about if you're growing in the right direction sexually. So I think that's awesome that she feels comfortable to talk with him about what she likes and what she doesn't like. I will say that's one thing that Alexa and Brennan really have going for them is their communication. It seems like is really good and healthy. They're able to share things that can be triggering for other couples. Sometimes you feel like a little defeated or defensive, but it seems like they're handling these conversations with care and able to give each other the benefit of the doubt. We've decided obviously to invite everybody. Cole's gonna be there. We felt Fine. like everyone should be invited, and you if he comes, what? he comes. That was always expected. What Not entertainment for, drink. for your birthday? I hired entertainment. Cole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a clown. It's a clown. <laughs> He's actually doing red flags. So. <laughs> Love okay, that. Well, cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers, cheers to your birthday. Cheers. Cheers to you, you baby. Yes. Yeah. This is what bothers me is when it comes to Cole. There's so much that they're willing to say like, he's got all these red flags and everything, but nobody's getting specific in what he's said or done. And the one thing that she got specific on about he was micromanaging her eating, there is proof that this didn't happen. And the other thing she got specific on is she said that he kissed someone the night before their wedding. Again, we have no proof of that. And so I'm just, it's very frustrating. Like, why are you all so comfortably angry at Cole with the only verification being Zay's word. That bothers me. Like I'm a proof person. I need to see some evidence. I don't just take people's side just because we're close or friends. I need to know like if you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong and I will tell you friend. And if they're in the wrong, prove it to me and I will have your back 100%. So I just feel like Zay's basically putting Cole in a position like if you're not ready to share what you did, then I will respect that. But if you're going to keep throwing him under the bus, just say what he did. So if it's something that he did or didn't do, he can defend himself. <sighs> I just don't like seeing somebody get just group bullied and slandered with no proof. I don't really think anybody deserves that, but like definitely with no proof. I just don't understand.
why they feel comfortable to bully him that way. I, I haven't met anyone that I want to be serious with again. I genuinely thought she was going to say yes at the wedding. And if she wasn't going to say yes, we had decided that we were going to keep dating. She totally lied to me. Like she played, she honestly played me. Someone commented on the video when I was talking about gaslighting with Cole and Zay. And I said that all I saw was Zay gaslight him. And they were like, ah, this is the wrong definition of gaslight. What gaslighting means, which by the way, you guys, gaslighting is a colloquial term. It is not a clinical term. This is not something that we're studying and reading about when we're in grad school. It's a new term that has hit the popular media, but is not necessarily academic or clinical. But what gaslighting means is to create an atmosphere where a person questions their reality. What Cole is describing here about them having an agreement about dating, if they were to say no, you know, he had this expectation that either they were going to say yes or they were going to still maintain a positive relationship with each other. And so that's why when I say that Zay was gaslighting Cole, I feel that he really had a misrepresentation of what this relationship looked like. And the first time he heard these things should not have been at the altar in front of an audience of people who then clap at a person's humiliation. All right. Blue light, two hits. Hey, hope. Why y'all doing shotgun? I know, right? Yeah. Boy, Cole, yeah, is, is he invited to the party? What's the story there? Um, I've been told there's an invite sending out, so. Okay, okay. Good. Good. How do you feel uh, about that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan. It's each their own. Anybody can be friends with whoever they want. I just don't want to be around them. See, I would really appreciate if Brennan has this strong perspective on Cole. I would really appreciate if he would share why. Why don't you want to be around him? Because what it looks like is like Alexa's mad at Cole for Zeneb with all the girls and Brennan is just taking whatever perspective she has. So that's how it looks and feels. But if he's had personal experiences that would help us understand, again, why everyone's upset with Cole, that would help us as we're trying to figure out like where should our support be? Obviously it doesn't matter <laughs> because we're just the general public. But I think a lot of us are very unsettled with, you know, all these accusations are being made with absolutely no reference to what the problem has been with him. There is a reason why this woman is in my life. There's a reason why I chose this woman. That has really given us an opportunity for us to be candid about the things that's working for us and the things that are not. That gave us a really solid foundation to start from. And it's just been very, very exciting watching our relationship flourish from there. How was things? Man, he seems so genuine, like so genuine. <sighs> I need answers. I need answers. You had Nancy. My lunch yesterday with Nancy, I'm like, damn, I see why I fell in love with this girl. Like, she's freaking awesome. Do you so, still have feelings for her? If we wanted to immediately move in with each other, I would have to break my lease, spend $5,000 just to break the lease, just to move in. We I both had mine, this conversation, and it was like, different. is it worth spending five thousand dollars? And if I y'all don't, that. if y'all don't want to live together, it's not. Oh our, no, hold on, y'all no, know not, this. It's not, it's not something I would do. It's Absolutely. not. It's but, not that we don't want to live together. I don't want to get that narrative out there. It's not that we don't want to live together. Well, you're not. We're not yet. Okay. I mean, we have plans to live together. Yes. Wow, Brennan's really coming for everybody today. He's like, you need to tell Nancy that you're not in love with her. <laughs> you need to admit that you don't want to live with Colleen. So. It's kind of interesting seeing this fiery side of Brennan. He just seems so mad at everyone else. Like he's just making all the right decisions and all these other guys need to get their acts together. Maybe that's how a lot of people feel, but I can't help but feel that maybe he's just regurgitating things that he's heard Alexa say, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong in perceiving it that way. Are you worried about people like questioning whether y'all love each other? Absolutely not, because I know where we really are. I know it is very abnormal for us to be married and not live together. Just because we don't live together does not mean that we love each other any less. As I already said at the beginning of the video, I feel like if they aren't in a position where they're comfortable living together, I completely support that decision. I am not one to believe that you have to follow the traditional trajectory. Every relationship is different. They obviously got together in a very unconventional way. And if they're not feeling comfortable with making those sacrifices to live together yet, like I said, I view them as a couple that's dating. You know, they're just still dating. They just happen to have a marriage license, but they're still getting to know each other and figuring out if it makes sense to continue pursuing a future together. I think they're still in that evaluative stage 
which I support. Bro, honestly, Raisin looks like she's amazing. I know I struck gold. This is the happiest I've ever seen, bro. I am happy. The fact that our relationship has stood the last one year is a big deal for me. And I feel a lot better about where we're at in our relationship. And I also think it's very important for me to give her that confidence that I'm still going to be here in another year from now. You know? So I want her to really feel like she has that commitment. I feel, I feel that. Man, you guys. <laughs> This like hurts to watch because I don't know what to believe. Like, I am still like, do we have all the facts? I just need them both to be on the same page about what happened because I don't think Raven's really said anything. And SK has essentially denied the accusation saying that the timing of things, you know, was when they weren't together. Some things are just unexplainable. Like if you invited someone that you've been dating to your wedding, that's something I heard. That's just unexplainable. You cannot explain that away. But everything else, you know, if we're looking at the receipts from that cheating situation, I could see how things would be happening because it's such big gaps while they weren't together. So I would love to hear from Raven's perspective and preferably maybe them together, like on the same page about this is what happened. Because SK is saying that this is not what unfolded, but you know, social media, we run off with whatever narratives are the juiciest sometimes. And I'm really trying to avoid that, but it is hard if everything is true or if some of the things are true and he was being deceitful, it's really hard to watch this stuff because he seems so sincere and like a really good partner for her. Okay guys, so that is episode one. We've got two more episodes to go and I'm not sure if they're going to be doing like a part two. I hope not, like let's just put this thing to rest. But my thoughts so far when it comes to Bartise and Nancy, they're over. I think it's very clear to both of them that they are over. I appreciate that they're trying to maintain a friendship, you know, as long as the lines aren't blurred, sure. When it comes to Brennan and Alexa, Seems like they're functioning well. Love to see those blended families. That was really heartwarming for me to watch. And seeing some different sides of Brennan, he seems to have some very strong perspectives on what it looks like to be in a healthy relationship. And hey, I love when someone can stand for what is right. You need that person in a friend group to be like, hey, you were in the wrong in this situation. But it seems like Brennan was taking some of these things personally. Like I don't know why, for example, it matters to him whether or not Matt and Colleen live together. As for Matt and Colleen, I didn't see anything in this episode that would be suggestive of some of the abuse that a lot of us were concerned about, but we'll keep watching. We'll look for signs of humiliation. We'll look for any signs of intimidation and fear like we saw throughout the season previously. If those things are still happening, then obviously that's very, very concerning. But it seems like Colleen is comfortable to say when she disagrees with Matt and things like that, and that is a good sign. And I think she might be the one leading the charge on them not living together. So I think he's being supportive of that, but we again don't know who's really leading the charge. That's just the sense that I get. When it comes to SK and Raven, my heart is breaking watching this couple that I really love to see and just knowing how it ends is so, so hard. This should be an exciting moment and I don't think none of us can be excited about it when we know how everything ends. And lastly, you know, how I feel about Cole and Zeneb. So it seems like they're both seeing the other as the villain. They both feel like the victim in the situation. I'm very curious how things are going to look at this party, which they're saying is the first time they saw each other since the wedding. So again, this just reiterates the fact that all of this was filmed before the reunion, which is kind of frustrating because what's the point? Like we already saw them after this point at the reunion talking about everything. So that's episode one. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to see what your thoughts are. For those of you who are here for the premiere, love chatting with you guys and seeing your thoughts. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Let me know what other shows and movies, especially I love doing movies that you guys would be interested in seeing me break down. Right now I'm watching you. So I might be doing a video on Netflix's show you. I've done one before. So let me know if you'd be interested in that and what you would like me to cover. If so, you didn't have to stay until the end, but I appreciate so much that you did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoa.